Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sammy and this is Lilith. And today, oh, what are we doing babes? Okay, you sit like that. Today I'm going to be going over basic ball python care. So basically just enclosure setup, temperatures, humidity levels, and stuff of that sort. So if Lilith looks like a little chubbier to you today, she just ate about four days ago. She hasn't poofed yet, but she never regurgitates, so I'm not super worried about it. Um, and it's also, the lump is really close to her tail at the moment, so I'm not too worried about her regurging. So anyway, let's give a quick tour of Lilith's tank, and then we'll go over care methods um, and stuff of that sort. So before we get started, I'd just like to point out Lilith's tank is not bioactive. I know a lot of people have been really into bioactive tanks recently. Lilith's tank is not bioactive. Um, I just didn't think that because of how skittish she is with just everything, I didn't think having isopods in her tank and springtails would be good for her because they'd probably just scare her because she is scared of literally everything. So I figured that I would just give her a regular enclosure and maybe when she gets more adjusted, we'll make it bioactive. But for now, it's not. So, my love, let's put you back into your house. Ooh, I'm in handcuffs. I have been apprehended. Okay, L Lilith, baby. Okay, I'm gonna put you back in your house. So this is Lilith's house. Um, as you can see, she's going into her main hide right now. Basically, I'm just going to go over her house in general and what's going on here. So Lilith's house has a total of five locks. There's a lock right here to close the front doors. And there's four locks on top because at her previous home, she was a bit of an escape artist. So I thought the more locks, the better. So in Lilith's tank, she has a big cave hide, which it isn't super large, but I tried giving her a bigger one and she didn't like it. So I just stick her with this one. She has a large water bowl, which I need to clean out because she took a bath in it this morning. She has a little bit of skull decoration, a fake plant for enrichment, and some sphagnum moss. And she is on coconut fiber substrate. So basically, I'm going to go over why I have all these things in her tanks and what temperatures her tank is. So as you can see, she does not have a heat lamp because we don't use heat lamps, we use heating mats because they're better for ball pythons you can see the cord for her basking one down here and then the cord for her thermostat which this is in celsius as you can see 34.3 celsius is about 93 degrees fahrenheit and that's in her basking spot so that's fine and then her thermostat for her um just ambient spot fell back there earlier but it's usually around 80 degrees over here so and then this really just tells my room temperature and my humidity gauge. And I just have my room temperature on here because that kind of helps me figure out how, what I need to set her thermostat to to get her at the proper temperature. And this is just a humidity gauge that I put right next to where her sphagnum moss is so I know when I need to spritz it. Hello everybody, this is Editing Sam here. And I would just like to say, in this video when I'm talking about substrates, I say cedar mulch. Um, I meant to say cypress mulch, I don't know why I said cedar, but, um, don't use cedar for your ball python. Don't do that. Cypress mulch is okay, though. Um, I think I was just, like, I was kind of, when I was filming this, I was kind of dissociating a lot. So, um, I kind of was slurring words, and, you know, it took me, like, two hours to film, because I was just not... attentive enough so yeah um don't use cedar in your snake's tank so now you're probably like well that enclosure didn't look super difficult and honestly a ball python enclosure isn't super difficult the most difficult thing to get in a ford really is the main tank so I have Lilith in a 25 gallon tank right now. I am hoping on upgrading her to something bigger. I found, I know some people don't recommend going over 40 gallons with ball pythons, but 
If you have enough hides and enough safe places for them, they'll be fine with it. I would like to get um, a tank that's a little bit taller because Lilith, I have noticed from letting her out and letting her have enrichment time and places in my room under my supervision that she does enjoy climbing. So I am hoping to get her a tank that's more vertical with some more climbing things in it so she can just have that enrichment time because that's something she enjoys doing and she does it without me making her she just kind of does it on her own so I would like to do that anyways so let's start from the ground so we're gonna get into substrate so Lilith's substrate is a coconut fiber substrate um, her tank may have looked a little barren that's because last time I cleaned it we were at the last bit of the bag there's still about two inches around but i would normally have about three inches of it all around so it's a little lower than normal so her substrate is a coconut fiber substrate the reason i prefer coconut fiber well i use coconut fiber substrates and cedar mulch the reason i prefer these two is because they hold humidity a lot better and of course they're safe for her and they're just better at holding in humidity, so that helps with her sheds. And she also just needs high humidity in general, so that just helps keep her healthy. And it's just a nice substrate to have for her. Um, a lot of people like using aspen shavings for a substrate, which of course you can. There's nothing wrong with it, but it just doesn't hold humidity quite as well. Basically, with aspen shavings, you'll see them shedding in little bits and pieces which is not what you want you want the shed to be one long full shed so having shedding in bits and pieces of course if they get all the sheds to get off it's not the worst thing in the world it's just not what we want to see from them so i prefer using coconut fiber and cedar mulch because they all hold in better humidity sometimes i use a mix of the two they hold in humidity really well we get that long full shed and she seems to enjoy them um and she seems to prefer little sitting in them a little more so now we're going to go into her cave hide. So she has this cave hide is right over her basking area. The reason I have this over her basking area is because um, that's where she spends most of her time. I used to have her cave in a different place and she'd come over here and in her basking area and I'd rather have her feeling more safe and comfortable in her basking area so I moved her hide over. Um, I had a hide in, I had another hide for her in her ambient temperature area but she just never really used it she'd go into her ambient temperatures but she didn't really like that hide so then i added that fake plant in instead and she likes curling up under that more than she did with that other cave so that's why she doesn't have two hides and she just kind of has the one and that fake plant but she fits under it pretty well and she seems to like it a lot so then she has a ceramic skull in there which i got at the el paso airport um, it used to be just a decoration in my room for a really long time, and I didn't really have anywhere to put it. And I was like, oh, it can go in the list tank. And it's more of just a decoration thing. It's pretty buried in the substrate, so she can't really move it around too much. Um, so that's just more of a decoration thing. Um, she likes sitting on top of it sometimes. If it's, a little, if it's a little hotter in her ambient area, and I have to adjust the thermostat, because the ceramic stays pretty co cool on the top, she will go sit on it if she wants to cool down a bit. So next, let's move into why I have sphagnum moss in her tank. Sphagnum moss, do not use it as the main substrate for your ball python. Just don't. It's not meant to be the main substrate for a ball python. So I have the sphagnum moss in that corner of her tank, which I don't have any substrate there. It's just the moss because that helps keep humidity levels up. And it's also really helpful for when she's in the process of shedding. Um, again, humidity levels are something you really want to focus on. Um, so you also may have noticed when I was showing you she has a humidifier next to her tank as well. That's if I'm replace if I'm cleaning out her tank or if it's in the summer. In the summer here it's kind of it's not super humid unless it's like raining. So if my room is super dry, I'll turn on that humidifier and that'll keep humidity levels up in her tank. And it also will just keep my room a little more breathable. So then I think that's all of the basic things in her tank other than her water bowl. So she has a water bowl that she can curl up in. I had a bigger water bowl for her. Um, she wasn't really a fan of it. I think just because it was big, it kind of freaked her out a bit. So I got her one that was a little bit smaller. She can still fit in it. She likes taking baths in it a lot, as you can tell from 
little piece of substrate in it. She took a bath in it this morning. Um, so I would just always have a water bowl that's big enough for your snake to go inside. Um, obviously don't make it, don't make it super deep so your snake can like drown themselves. Um, but just have it relatively big enough so they can kind of sit in it and just relax and take a little bath on their own. So this is really helpful because that can help with stuck shed and just help them before their shedding process starts and while it's happening. So I change out her water every single day. So you cannot use tap water for ball pythons unless you treat it with dechlorinators because the chlorine in tap water can ultimately give them diseases and after a long period of time, if there's a lot of chlorine in your tap water at your house, it can kill your ball python. And we also have fluoride in our water, which I'm not sure is dangerous for ball pythons or not, but you don't want fluoride in your snake's water. That's not something snakes need. It's not something they want. So I give her actually bottled water, which I also filter and treat that too, but just to stay safe. But she gets bottled water. Um, she gets the same water that I drink, because in my house, we prefer a bottled water, which I know is plastic and it's bad for the environment, but we actually recycle most of it and I usually use it. And I actually like to cut the bottles in half and use it for paint water and stuff like that. Actually, you can use the bottom half of the bottle as a really nice cup if you paint it and stuff, it's really cute. Anyway, so she gets the same water that I drink that makes me feel more comfortable that we're drinking the same thing. And I know it's okay for her to drink and it's okay for me to drink, so it makes me feel a bit better. So then the five locks on her tank. At her old house, she didn't have locks on her tank, so she was kind of an escape artist. Um, so I figured before getting her, I would get a tank that had a lot of locks on it. Hence, the five locks that are on her tank. So she has the five locks on her tank because those keep her inside. Those prevent her from getting out because she is a little bit more inquisitive. Um, and those just kind of help her stay inside because I have two cats and a dog so having locks all on her tank is really helpful because my cats learned how to open doors so I know that sounds really crazy maybe I'll make a video showing one of them opening a door later but that just helps because if one of them gets my room door open which is over there if one of them gets my room door open then she'll be safe and secure inside her tank so that makes me feel a lot better so now that we've discussed what's inside her enclosure, let's discuss what we're keeping out of her enclosure. So her enclosure, um, when I do, so I t clean out, I change out substrate every, so I always pick up feces and urate and stuff like that from her tank. As soon as she lets it out, I take it out and clean that up right away. So I wanna say I fully change her substrate every two weeks and I deep clean her tank every month. So deep cleaning her tank, I move her into her travel carrier, which is pretty, it's still a pretty decent size for her. She just kind of lays it in and chills. I put a heat, I put a little bit of substrate in the bottom. I put a heating mat under so she can kind of be warm and cozy. So then I use chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine is a cleaning solution that is used by vets for animals. Um, it's safe as long as you use it in the proper way. And I use it diluted, so I mix it with some water in a spray bottle, and I spurt, And after I take everything out of her tank, I spritz it around and we clean everything up. So, but before we use chlorhexidine, um, so I scoop out all the substrate I can get scooped. Then I vacuum out all the little pellets that I left behind. Um, I change out her water. I clean all her all the stuff in her tank. So I usually put the fake plant in a bowl of bottled water or treated tap water, and I just kind of let it soak for a minute, and then I kind of just work it, make sure there's nothing on it, because the fake plant is kind of around where she likes pooping and urating. So I make sure we get that really clean. And then for the sphagnum moss, the sphagnum moss I take out and I just kind of let it sit in a little container to the side for a minute before replacing it. So unless I see something wrong with the sphagnum moss, like if there's anything growing on it that's not supposed to be there or anything like that, you can usually keep the same sphagnum moss for a while because it is a living plant. 
So I guess I guess her tank is a little bit bioactive because there's a living plant in it. But yeah. And they also, because they take in carbon dioxide, let out oxygen, that can help kind of just filter air throughout the tank. So with cleaning, I do chlorhexidine diluted with some water. That's probably gonna be the best cleaning solution if you're deep cleaning a tank. And also I use I use bed bug spray to get rid to make sure there's no mites because bed bug spray actually does work for mites and it's a lot cheaper than the specific mite sprays you'll see online and at pet stores. So using this bed bug spray, it prevents any mites from getting into a tank. And mites are really gross and terrible. I'll probably do a video on them later. I've never had mites. Um, I know people who have. I've never had them. Knock on wood. So it's just really helpful. So for cleaning, bug, bed bug spray, chlorhexidine. So now let's get into a bit more of the feeding aspect. I know this video is kind of very general. It's glossing over a lot of stuff. It's not very long. Um, I'll try to make more in-depth videos on all this subject later, but I think this is just a good intro to ball python care. So now let's get into feeding. So if you're a person who has never had a snake or a carnivorous animal that you feed before, you're probably like, what the heck are these giant tweezers? These are feeding tongs. So these are a smaller pair of feeding tongs because Lilith is not a super large snake. Obviously with a Burmese python or a reticulated python or even a boa constrictor, you'd have the super big ones. But for Lilith, we just have these. So for feeding a ball python, I feed Lilith a frozen thawed rat every two weeks. That's when she likes eating. That's when she accepts food. Um, if I feed her every week, she doesn't accept it. She doesn't want it. But every two weeks seems to be good for her and we've never really when we first got her we had a bit of a problem with her getting to eat but that was just because she was adjusting to her new environment but now she eats like a champ so a fun thing about ball pythons there are various methods of feeding you can do they're the two ones that are like good for like snakes that don't really need help eating that don't have any neurological problems or are a good healthy weight um would be dangle feeding which is where you grab the thawed out rat or mouse, depending on your snake's size, grab it by the tail, you dangle it in your tank, the snake comes up, it grabs it, you kind of tussle for with it for a second, so it gives that a live stimulation, you let it go, you leave it. So you use those tongs to avoid getting struck. But Lilith actually, she does not dangle feed. Um, she doesn't like it. A moving rat scares her because um, she's scared of Basically everything, she's a very, she's one of the more skittish ball pythons that I've met in like my whole life. She's incredibly skittish. So I use my tongs still. I grab the rat by its tail out of its, when it's thawed out, out of the um, container I use to thaw it in. I place it in her tank on top of a paper towel so she doesn't get substrate on it. And then in her own time, she'll come over and grab it herself and she'll eat it that way. So then you go into more of assist feeding and force feeding. So assist feeding is when you take the snake out, you open its mouth with the nose of the mouse or rat, and you just kind of get it in their mouth, and then they take their care of the rest. With force feeding, you take, you open their mouth with the nose or with the rat. Um, if they don't eat it through assist feeding, then you force feed it to them which force feeding is not recommended. This is really just a last, last resort. Like force feeding is what you do after you've tried live feeding. Like that's how last resort force feeding is. So of course I never recommend live feeding unless it's the only way your snake will eat. If that's the absolute only way your snake is eating, then of course, what can you do? But with ball pythons, I recommend frozen thawed because most of the time they do accept it. And if your snake is right to mine, and if your snake is a Lilith and they're scared of literally everything, then, you know, frozen thawed is probably a better option. And also with live feeding left unattended, um, mice or rats can attack the snake and it can get really bloody and messy and it's just not good for either of them to be in that kind of situation. So of course, I oh, little mosquitoes outside my window. Hello, mosquito. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm getting really distracted. So of course, I like frozen 
God feeding. So these feeding tongs I can leave. I'm going to try to leave a link to most of the stuff I got online below. Um, the things I didn't get online, I didn't get her enclosure online. And I got her plant and her moss at a store. And of course her little day of the dead skull is from a store in the El Paso airport. So I'll leave a link to everything I got online below so you can kind of get it for your own ball python. So I'll leave a link to these feeding tongs, the chlorhexidine, the bed bug spray, um, her cave hide, her water bowl, and also I can leave a link to the heating mats I use for her and the thermostat I use. And I also have a heat gun, which let me go over this real quick. A heat gun is going to be your best friend because the problem is with in-tank thermometers is they only, they're doing measures of the certain spot where they're at. But with a heat gun, you can check everywhere in the tank. You can look at every single spot in the tank. So this is really helpful. Let's see how hot my room is. My room is 66.4 degrees, woo. So these are really helpful because you can look at every single spot in the tank. And it's also really nice realizing that you have your room super cold and then your snake's tank is like, my room is like Texas winter, Lilith's tank is Texas summer. Like that's the difference between <laughs> the temperature in her tank and my room. But I have a space here. So anyway, heat guns will be your best friend. I'll leave a link to this heat gun below as well. I hope this video is a little helpful in your introduction to ball pythons. If I said any information that is wrong or incorrect, please shoot me a message on one of my social media accounts or comment down below and correct me because obviously we don't want to spread false information to people looking for snakes. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll try to make another video soon. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get, I'll be able to film her next feeding process and do a video specifically on feeding. So thank you for watching and goodbye.